Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Jeremy Goodwin. Today we talk about Homeworks. That's a program that pays teachers to visit the homes of their students. The goal is to improve student performance and attendance. Joining me, joining me to talk about Homeworks today is its founder and CEO, Karen Kalish, Lisa Pines, who is the school secretary at Vachon High School, and Diane Diamond is the principal of Sticks Early Education Center. That's just east of Forest Park. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, the, the founder and CEO of Homeworks. Uh, we often talk about school-aged children as if their identity as students defines them. These people are students, but simple math tells us that children spend most of their time actually outside of school. And you've, you've done the math and counted it up, and full-time students spend about 14% of the full year in a classroom or in a school, and that's someone who doesn't miss a day. Is that enough? Actually, um, it's 14%, which is uh, 174 days in Missouri. Most other states are 180 times seven hours a day. But it doesn't talk about the 53% that they're out of school. That means all summer, every Saturday, every Sunday, and nine hours of every day they're not sleeping or in school. We need the 14% in school to be working with the 53%, the home the moms, the dads, the grandmothers, to work on the education of the students, to improve academic achievement, attendance, classroom behavior, homework completion, and getting parents to feel comfortable in school. The why of this program is that there are so many children in St. Louis and all over the whole country who are born and have very little reading and talking going on at home in those first five years before they come to school and they come and they're already a year or two behind. And it's impossible with that 14% that you bring up for them to really get up on grade level, stay on grade level, graduate, and go on to college or some other post-secondary education to be able to put food on their table. We're about learning leading to earning, being in the workforce, not the workhouse. And it starts at birth. Mom, dad, grandma, reading and talking, playing and singing with their kids from day one to come to school ready to learn. Mm. So school works places teachers in the homes of students, but tell us what does take us through a, a typical visit. What what will actually happen on on a session? Well, first it's um, sometimes hard to get into the home. We've got moms and dads, grandmothers who are working two and three jobs. We have moms, dads, grandmothers who are a little fearful of someone coming in the home. They haven't had anybody in the home before and outside, and some of them don't want people in the home. So getting over that hurdle is, is somewhat sometimes hard, but we immediately come back with, can we meet you at the library? Can we meet you at the church? Can we meet you at the community center? Not in school, because that's where teachers are in power, but can we meet you somewhere else? Because all we want to do is get to know you and talk about your child and get everybody on the same page, because we need you to partner with us, the teachers say. And so getting in the home, we do training, three hours of training of all teachers and everyone in the building who is making vis who are making visits, train them for three hours because they're going into homes that are often very different from their own. And how to build that relationship, what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say, and get that, just get that relationship going and start building that trust. And those are two key words for us, trust and relationship. And once we get that, then we can become partners, the teachers and home, school and parents. So this is much more, this is not a tutoring program. Absolutely not a tutoring program. It is a relationship building, trust building program that gets parents to work with the school and the teachers and then start learning about what needs to happen at home to increase academic achievement at school. It's all about that relationship, that trust. I have a, a testimonial here. Before the home visit, the student was not reading independently at home and was below grade level in reading. After the home visit, the student's parents began having the student read at home regularly. Together, they've been, we have been able to help him work up to grade level in reading. If I hadn't done the home visit, I wouldn't know that his family wasn't aware that reading at home was so important. This is one of hundreds of testimonials that we get. And that's from, from, from teachers, a teacher who is actually doing the work. Absolutely. Teachers, we get it from parents. We get it from the students who are so happy when those children to teachers come into their home, even at the high school level. 
which was very surprising to me. So do Early childhood elementary, oh my gosh, they can't wait till their teacher comes. But I was surprised that middle and high school students, and Ms. Pines can talk about that, that they want the teachers to see where they're living and what they're doing. The teachers who are a part of HomeWorks, are these, who, who are the, te are these the teachers who work at the local schools as well, or is this a separate? It's the, the teachers and other people in that building who are in that school visiting their students. And teachers always go in pairs. So, so the, it's all based around the school that the child attends. Absolutely. We take no volunteers. This is about a relationship between school and home. So it's the child's teacher, classroom teacher. At the early childhood elementary level, it's the classroom teacher. At middle and high, in high school, it's either the science teacher, the language teacher, the math teacher, or the social studies teacher, and someone else in the building who has been trained. And that someone else is as important and sometimes more important than the classroom teacher because of the relationship. And Lisa, I understand you have made, Lisa Pines of the Vachon High School, you've made over 80 of these home visits, is that right? That is correct. Over, over what period of time? Uh, first semester. I made 147 visits. That is unheard of. That is unbelievable to make that many visits. Does it get easier? It's real easy because it's just sitting down and sharing with the parents information about what we have to offer and about building the relationship, getting to know them and letting them know that we care, we truly care, and what resources we have not only for the students but also for the parents and their families. And they're amazed at that. And also having tangible information to give them in order to assist them. Would you talk a bit about the importance of, of parents being involved in the education process? And it's not simply sending the kids off to school and being sure they get there, which is a big part of it. Sure. But you want the parents to be involved um, full time, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, also being aware of the resources that we have, that we have tutoring. We have ACT prep. Um, also that if there's other needs that they need, such as we have a food pantry at Vashon High School if it's something in that area. And our full service uh, office wants that area to be considered a home away from home. So it's whatever their needs are, we want the parents to be aware. And a lot of times the parents are not aware of the resources that we have. We have um, different uh, companies coming in doing tutoring. We have our own teachers that come in and tutor our students. We have various programs that are going on that would just um, help the student with personal development in other areas. I'd like to add one thing about Vishan. Yes, Karen. Vishan is somewhat of a um, challenging. It's got its challenges. It's got a very high homeless rate and a rate of, of um, leaving school and coming back and leaving and coming back. And so is it, there are challenges there. And so when they came to us four years ago and said we want to do home visits, I, my palms were itching to get in. <laughs> and I was so wondering how high school kids wanting the teachers and they said they're going to go to the students and say who would like a home visit and over a hundred hands went up and it has been extraordinary to have these kids have home visits some of them have not been in, in their home had to be somewhere else some of them have gone to the home I'm mean, one story gone to the home of a student but in the driveway was a car and didn't quite and one of the students was around the car and come out, they realized that the student in the car was homeless and living in the car with the father of the family. Mm. And so they did two home visits in that one. But they never would have known if they hadn't made the home visit. There's so much information they wouldn't know if they hadn't made a home visit. Mm. And Diane Diamond, you're, you're principal of the Sticks Early Education Center Correct. here in, in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. You work with HomeWorks? I do. I have been working with HomeWorks about nine years, I think, in total. And a number, a number of teachers at the school are a part of it? Yes, yes. Is that, is that something that folks volunteer for? Do, is this seen as another task to do? What, they what's, do the te what's the teacher response when you bring up the topic? Okay, they do volunteer. Um, this year, our numbers are pretty high with our classroom teachers that are involved. And what's happened is I have a lot of new teachers that started this year too, and so they weren't ready to go on home visits. You know, starting your first year as a teacher, that's a lot. Um, but they are hearing the excitement You're from the teachers. You're just prepping to make a classroom visit at that point right, in your career. Right, right, yeah. and getting everything in place. So they are excited because I've already asked the question, who wants to participate next year? And I'm going to have more teachers participating next year too. So it is 
something that I know Karen wants to have happen, and I would like to have happen, that it's just the culture of the building. That's what we do. We go to home visits, and we partner with the parents. And the teachers get paid for this? They do. They do. Absolutely. And they also get paid something called a no-show. If they call a half hour ahead and say, I'm on my way, we're, so ex- we're on our way, we're so excited, and they get there and the door doesn't open, they get paid half. And then they have to make the, another appointment to get there as soon as possible. And who, who pays the teachers? Oh, You're raising do. your hand. I, yes, because uh, we, we gladly pay them. And our budget this year is $974,000. And a lot of that goes to paying the teachers to make the visit. This is over and above the call of duty. And so we gladly pay them, and I'm always looking for ways to pay them more because this is hard work, really hard work. And so I raise all the money, and we have just fabulous donors of um, Centene, Emerson, um, Ameren. They love the idea of helping kids at home and building that relationship because everyone knows how important at home is. Lisa brought up about caring. There's a famous saying in in schools that children, parents, children don't know how much you, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so the parents find out, God, you really do care about us. And the children, you really do care about us. And you mentioned there's some private companies and foundations. Is there government support for this also? We have no government support, no United Way support. It's all um, corporations, family foundations, and individuals, and from ten dollars to a hundred thousand dollars, are is the our gifts. We have, our board is wonderful. Hundred percent of the board gives and gets, and we need the money to be able to pay the teachers. That is so important, and we don't ever, ever have to say no to a school who wants to come on board. We're in twenty three schools this year: mm. seven early childhood, eight elementary, four middle schools, and four high schools. So let's talk a bit about why you're doing this work. Who are these schools that you work with? Where do they come from, and how do you identify them? Well, let That's me turn to Diane up and yeah. say, why did you say yes when I first came to you? Well, as an early childhood center, we know that statistically parents are more involved than they are in high school by statistic purposes. But I just feel that we need to do it because we need to build the partnership. When I was a teacher in early childhood education, I worked for a different district in another state, and it was part of our program. So it just seemed a natural fit to me that we should be doing it at our early childhood center, Sticks Early Childhood Center. And parents, we, we learned that parents tend to be more involved with their children's education in the earlier years, and that starts to taper off? Is Correct. That- Correct. Statistics show that by fifth grade, there's less involvement, parent involvement, than there is in the early years. And we do lots of things at our school to involve parents at the school, but this was our opportunity to step outside the building and show the parents that we're willing to come to you, bring ideas, share ideas, and work with you. There's a huge ripple effect just from one visit. The parents and the children are, and the students are affected Im- immediately when you start that relationship. But the teachers told us almost from the beginning, I'm a better teacher having done home visits. It fills in a whole bunch of information that I thought I knew. I thought I knew my kids, but I didn't know anything until I got in that home and started building that relationship. And then we find that the kids in the classroom who've been visited are behaving better. I think you both have found that, which means more teaching time for the students. How do you measure that? And the the behavior, yeah. that is un- fortunately or unfortunately anecdotal because every building does it a little bit differently. And some of them use something called PBIS, positive, positive behavior. Some don't. So b- measuring behavior is anecdotal, and we use surveys because it's hard to measure when you don't have everybody doing the same thing. So, And the other thing that happens is we have a tool called the Cradle to Career Pathway mm-hmm. to Success that shows what ha- should happen in each year for a child to move on to the next grade. And we're using that with all the families and the uh, children in the home. And so we get information back that all the children are doing better, not just the one that I am visiting, not just if I'm a third grade teacher visiting that one. So the ripple effect of just one visit from a teacher and someone else in the building to the family is huge. That, by the way, is Karen Kalish. You're the founder and CEO of HomeWorks, the teacher home visit program. We're talking about HomeWorks today and what the work is and, and who is served by this and why you're doing this and how this benefits uh, students in the in the greater St. Louis region. Who are the kids who, who participate in this? Are, are they kids who are having trouble in school? 
Well, Not necessarily. I'll, start with, that. I'll okay. start with that, and then you add in. Because okay. what we ask you all to do is to be sure and visit the students who are below grade level, who have attendance behavior tardiness issues, ELL, English language learners, and everyone new to the building. But in some schools, like Diane's, it's the way they do business, and they visit everyone, mm -hmm. not just those. What about you, um, We Ms. visit Pines? everyone as well because there's different areas, uh, and just getting them ready for, you know, the next level too. You know, some of the parents are not aware of what they need to do in order to prep them for the next level, like ACT prep and that sort of things, which really helps, and also giving that, them that insight of whether or not their child wants to take a trade or go on to a um, two-year college or a four-year college. You know, what are the, re, uh, the college requirements for that? So we bring that information. But when you were talking about the creative to careers, that is a very, very phenomenal piece of material. Those parents get so excited about that because they go, wow, they can actually see, well, my child should be performing here. So you all provide tutoring to help them there, and not only that, they can use it not only for their children, but also a lot of them say, I can use it for my grandbabies. So, so. this is on our website under resources called Cradle to Career, mm -hmm. Pathway to Success, and we have it in English, Spanish, and Bosnian. Mm -hmm. Be just because we want to get to as many students as possible, but can you all talk we, a little bit yeah. about um, before and after stories of you went to a visit and something happened as a result of the visit? Well, I know, um, and Lisa, you're again at the Vashon School. At Vashon High School. And you've made many of these visits, so you have yes. a lot of experience. Yes, sir. Um, a couple of them stick out. Um, one in particular, we had a student, uh, once we did his second visit, he, he was actually saying, I'm just fed up with school. I don't want to do school anymore. And we told him, let's just, let, let us work with you. What is it that you need? We're willing to offer tutoring. If you need a class change, we're willing to make those adjustments. Let us work with you. Although you have your teachers, your principal, but you have other people in the building that are go-to people. This student now comes and speaks to me every day. Every day. And doesn't want so to leave school. Does not want to leave school. He's actually looking for summer employment, so I'm so proud of him, and I always let him know I'm just so glad to see you here today. So all because of the home visit? All because of the home visit. He was just really ready to give up. And just having, you know, even when he had those moments where he just needed to go somewhere, the teacher said, you can come to my room, you know, let your teacher know, and you can come in there. And if there's something that I can work with you on, because a lot of our teachers, they tutor as well, but also we have outside tutors that come in. So, Would yeah. you talk a little bit more about the... The thing, the the underlying problems that that lead lead to a program like HomeWorks and and what you are trying to trying to address in these communities, um, what is leading to some of the problems these students are having? Uh, let me start by saying that 68 percent of Missouri's fourth graders, 68 percent, more than two thirds, are below grade level in reading mm -hmm. in the whole state. 62 percent performing below grade level in math. That's Two-thirds, only one-third of our students in this whole state. And St. Louis Public Schools has its share of challenges and even, in some cases, higher numbers than this. We've got kids who will not end up in the workforce. And when the data shows that when you come to school behind and no way to catch up, you're going to end up in the criminal injustice system. We have to save these kids and their families so that we have them for our workforce. Do you want to add anything to why it's so important that we do this work? Um, that is very important. And not only that, when you talk about reading, uh, a couple of things that we do when we go out for the home visits, we have a program that we partnered with the um, St. Louis Library where we're able to get students library cards. All the parents have to do is fill out the application. They don't have to go through the rigorous process of the library and we'll submit that application and the, and the card would actually come to the school and we will give that to the students. Um, also, um, 
It was something else that I wanted Diana, to do you have any stories about. that you wanted to? I did. I wanted to connect to a couple of things that um, Karen said before when she was talking about the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. I talk to my teachers when they come back from home visits, um, try to catch up with them the next day. And one of the teachers commented that it helped her connect the dots mm -hmm. for the student, mm -hmm. that by going into the home and seeing how the child interacted with parents and what, how the parents handled the child, she was able to come back and be more successful mm -hmm. with that child. And then there's another case, Karen talks about trust, mm -hmm. little preschool child child who um, came to school and didn't trust the teacher or the teacher assistant. And because of that, he had some anxiety. And because of that, he acted out in the classroom. Teacher and um, another person went on the home visit, re built that relationship with that child. And after the home visits, he stopped having those issues with his teacher and, and, and classmates. So, you know, that's a success story for a very young child. Mm. Because as Karen said, you know, once now that behaviors are under control, this child can absorb and start learning and and start being successful in his environment. Do we see much of a difference in, in these issues between rural and urban schools? Um, no. The sh I'm, no. Matter of fact, we are in rural, we're in urban, and we're in suburban. We're in all the way out in Marshall on the other side of Columbia. Um, all white, 87% poverty, and we're in six schools there. And then we're in University City, we're in St. Louis Public Schools, we're in Hazelwood, so we're in suburban and SLPS. The problems are across the board of not enough talking, reading, playing, singing in the home from birth and coming to school ready to learn and then staying on or above grade level and having their parents engage the whole time. And parents, they want to. Mm -hmm. You find that when you go in, they want to do something yes. for their child and don't know. It's DK, DK. They don't know they don't know it. But they want to help, and they're so open to your suggestions. Mm -hmm. when you, but they didn't know. No one was read to them. We have generations of families where no one read to their kids, and they want to help. And so they're so open to learning, learning, learning. But it's really hard work, and it's one child at a time one family at a time. There's nothing wholesale about this that can happen. It's really hard, but it is so rewarding to make such a difference in a family and get these kids on track and getting moms, dads, grandmas to play such a big part and be a partner. And one of, one of the issues you aim to address is just in increasing attendance, right? Mm -hmm. getting Huge, huge issue. And to folks who don't study this, we might hear, we think of truancy maybe as that's a, a misbehaving child who's, who's skipping school just because they don't feel like going. But, but there's a lot more that goes into what causes a child to miss school on a given miss day, the bus, right? Miss the bus and no way to get there. Mom has a meeting and keeps them home to take care of the other kids. Ha getting their hair braided. There are reasons that would not have kept middle and upper class kids home from school that keep many, too many of our kids home. And they need to be there all day, every day. So there are class issues that make it easier or harder to simply get your kids to school. Do you want to speak to either either of you about attendance and what, how you're Lisa, working with that? Lisa, uh, I'm sorry, Karen. Uh, Diane. Excuse me. <laughs> We've got three guests. Diane, you're the principal of the Sticks Early Education Center. Correct. What's your perspective from there? Um, there are unique challenges. One of my teachers I know um, goes above and beyond, as a lot of my teachers do. Um, this particular parent wasn't waking up in order to get the child to the bus to get to school on time. This, parent, this teacher called this parent every morning, got up every morning and called the parent and said, it's time to get up, get her ready for school. Um, and part of that reason is the mom was working a job at late at night and would come home in the wee hours and fall asleep and not be able to get up. So attendance, and especially for an early childhood center too, sometimes parents um, think that the child doesn't need to be there the whole day. It's early childhood. It's, you know, so they're coming late or they're picking them up early. So we really stress, as Karen said, every day, all day. We start at 9.10. Our instruction starts at 9.10. We go till 4.07. We need the children there that entire time so that they're getting their basic reading skills or math skills, social emotional building and all of that. So, um, yeah, and um, our education reporter here at St. Louis Public Radio, um, Ryan Delaney, produced a feature recently on a, a family that was experiencing homelessness and just the difficulty of getting getting the child to school every morning. They're not quite sure where they're going to spend the night mm -hmm. or what the transportation is going to be or if they're going to be spending hours riding a bus to get to the school. Or sleeping in the same bed 
two nights or three nights in a row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another part of this program is um, we have family dinners that we pay for. Mm -hmm. Because after the visit, actually before or after the visit, we want them to come to school and be comfortable at school. So we at HomeWorks pay for the family dinners where we have testimonials from the parents who get up and say, you know, I didn't want this. I was scared to death. I thought you were going to look in the refrigerator under the bed to see what kind of mom I was. And all you wanted to do was get to know me. And they say this in front of these, all these parents that come, hundreds actually in these two schools. <laughs> and um, it, it, it persuades the parents who have said no to say yes. Well, if she can do it, I, maybe I'll do it then too. So, and then we have teachers make testimonials who say, I thought I knew my kids, I knew nothing. Those are the two most often uh, testimonials. Another testimony is that a lot of the teachers say, this has been the most parent interaction that I've had since I've been teaching a student because some of them don't come out to parent-teacher conference. So being able to go to them it's very helpful. We like to go in really early in the year. We mm -hmm. want to go to back to school night. We want to go to the uh, meet the teacher night. We want to pay for a family dinner in the first few weeks of school. We give every school a banner that says we're a homework school. We want to get the buzz going. And so the families get to the place that Diane talked about saying, I don't have a choice about this. This is the way they do business here. Mm -hmm. We, I, I, I don't want to say yes, but I've got to. And that's what we want to do. And we stay with the school for five years. We have a special dispensation for um, <laughs> for sticks because <laughs> we left. And oh, then so. we, well, we came back in because we um, want, we have two evaluation teams. Getting data is crucial for the success of this program and learning from that data and applying it to our program. So we're data, data, data. And so we one of our teams was um, lucky enough or working hard enough to get a quarter of a million dollars to study our work. And we're the only ones in the United States that got this money to study our work. So last year, in 11 schools in SL, St. Louis Public Schools, Diane's was one of them, elementary, half the kids got visits, half the kids didn't. And that was a year and a half ago, and this last year it's been analyzed. We don't know the results yet, but I can guarantee that we will learn so much from this data of where our holes are and what we can be doing to be even more effective. And in fact, HomeWorks wants to be the nonprofit in this free area of parent and family engagement to always be doing the studies and disseminate that information around the country so that other people can learn from us of what works and what doesn't work. So would you say you're developing a system and, and best practices that can be replicated in other parts of the country? Absolutely, and I personally want to start a movement because this parent and family engagement is so crucial to the success of not only the schools, our kids, but the wider community. I'm just so passionate about the need for this and for our babies to get that good start and those moms, dads, grandmothers to really be partners for their children. I think we hear that we hear that passion pretty clearly. I think when <laughs> when you all talk about this. Any story that you haven't told yet, Diane, that you wanted to share? Um, well, this goes back to what you said too about um, children who come with less ac less words being spoken in the home and things. We had a kindergarten child enroll in school late, and um, apparently didn't attend preschool or anything like that. So it was very low academically. The teacher went on the home visit and um, said that now the parent reaches out to her saying, what can I work on next? What can I do next? So she's, the parent is really engaged in how to help her child catch up, and that mm -hmm. child is catching up. Thank you so much to my guest today. It's really been a pleasure talking about this. We've been, we've been talking about homeworks with Karen Kalish, the founder and CEO. Lisa Pines, the school secretary of Vashon High School, and Diane Diamond. We've firmly identified you, Diane, right? <laughs> yes. Diane Diamond, uh, principal of Sticks Early Education Center, which you can find just east of Forest Park here in St. Louis. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. 
Choosewood.com.